Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Matt, a.k.a. Thanatos, and today I am joined by two very special guests, uh, White Whale Comics. Oh, I got, I got first billing. Well, I guess TJ gets top billing. That makes sense. A rookie, rookie mistakes over here. Jeez. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Alec. Repeat. Hi, my name's Alec. So that's Alec. That's all I got, yeah. I introduced him first, only supposed to because, you know, he's kind of important. But, but I want to say the best for last. And that is welcoming TJ, the Slab Dragon Watson, to my channel. This is the first time he has been on my channel. So welcome, TJ. Hi, everyone. Glad to see you. That's all you got? That's all you got there? I mean, <laughs> it, was more, it was more than I said. <laughs> so TJ and I have been kind of planning this for a while. He has literally been hoarding, hoarding comics and hoarding bags and boxes uh, with the intention of opening them, and uh, he says that they ha he has some pretty amazing grails. Um, so I, I hope that's accurate. Is it accurate? I have some very rare old books. Mm, and everybody loves some rare old books. Hopefully, uh, DS Comics shows up so he can he can partake. Uh, and if you guys notice, let me let me go to TJ real quick. Look at that. Look at the mountains that are behind him. He told me today that he has through experience figured out how many slabs he can stack without busting them from the weight or having them fall over. Yes. Have you ever had an accident? I've had them fall over in me. I've had uh, dominoes. Uh, I've had um, a stack of too high. You can hear them start to crack. That. Yeah, or if you just ship them poorly, they crack too. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's so unfortunate. Yeah, Alex, if you, if you, you have a CBCS lab, it'll crack. Yeah. I got this today in the mail. Oh, then, that's so pretty. Yeah. And then I noticed that little little problem that was not in the photos. So, so before we do this, so we are gonna we're gonna do some unboxings. We're gonna ask TJ some questions. I want to do a little Q and A with him. I've got a couple questions from from fans, TJ fans, uh, or like the what is would that be like the cult of the Slab Dragon? <laughs> but uh, we got we got some great people in the chat. We got Whoopty Bird, Comic Books NYC, JP's Budget Collecting, JM Comics, JD's in the house. The Boy Who Had Seven is here. Uh, Perry Comics, Bake the Snake, Just a Recon in his comics. And I had something from Just a Recon, and I'm not sure I put it somewhere. But I'll, I'll show that a little later in the show. Um, I got a surprise package from him. Randy Ransnake, Rassnake, Wingnut always here. Uh, J Hood Creative got a bunch of, oh, DS Comics is here, so he gets to appreciate your, your old timey books. Yay! Yay. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna be flipping out in the chat, I'm sure. Yeah, he's getting J Hood Creative said uh crack slab equal textbook with first world problems. Yeah, man, like it's comic books. <laughs> but it's it's good money comic books, you know, like you paid good money. I mean, yeah. I, I guess so. <laughs> you know, surprisingly, you are you messaged me today about that that slab being cracked. And Whoopty Bird actually messaged me, and he had a slab that was cracked as well. So be careful, PJ. Today's a bad, bad day for slabs. So far, nothing got cracked today, but I've many times have them come in the mail cracked because they just ship poorly. And what do you do about them? Uh, I usually ask for a um, uh, refund enough to uh, have it reslabbed. And do you usually just do like the fifteen dollar reslabbing fee, or do you also ask for shipping? Uh, usually the slabbing fee. That doesn't sound like enough. No, I got I got more than that. Yes. Because what, it's it's like fifteen dollars to get it reencapsulated, but then you have to pay probably what thirty dollars in shipping total. Probably, but uh, I'm I'm never sending them out right away. I've never sent one to be reslabbed yet. Didn't yeah. In here. And I, I guess. It would, like, depending on grade, like, for example, the one that Whoopty Bird showed me today, um, I think the, the GPA would have made it not worth, like, you might as well just keep it as is if you still like the way it displays, I suppose. I mean, eventually I'm going to get them all uh, re, uh, 
re-slab with the new cases. Which yeah. Is, yeah. Sure. Tony Sanders is in the house, and so is Popcom. A bunch of great people in the chat here. All for you, TJ. So I got a few questions today. Oh, whoopie bear got a full refund. Man, I got screwed. Yeah, well, he got to keep his book and a full refund. Well, that's what I was trying to get convince eBay to do for me, but they were like, no, you have to return the book. I was like, return the book. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good book to have in that grade. Yeah, and it'll be the same grade when you have it reflab. So Yeah, all right. Yeah, I know. Anyway, enough so, about, about my stupid Donald's 13. We're talking about real bo books today. That's a real book. <laughs> well, I mean, it exists. TJ, you having a drink at midnight? Yep. I didn't want to talk because I wanted to see. I wanted everyone to see how awesome that glass is. Hold on, I got to put it on. Look at this thing. <laughs> it is a, a golden goblet. That that is some Lord of the Rings action if I've ever seen it. I'm drinking out of this tonight. What the hell is that? A platypus? It's a hedgehog. Oh. I'm not really drinking out of it. It's like one of the like scent diffusers. I just had it here. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm going to try not to drink too much tonight because I got a lot of packing to do. <laughs> All right. So, down to business. So, some books. well, before we see some books, uh, I figure we would like to do a little intro into who TJ Watson is and what makes him the Slab Dragon. So, I collected a few questions from different fans of TJ. And uh, I'd like to share a few of them. Um, a question that, that I, I'm going to ask, mostly because I don't know if, if the people in the crowd know. And if they do, um, I'm sure they'll appreciate hearing it. What is your updated total slab count? 1,882. 1,882 slabs. And you have a CGC registry, correct? Yes. Do you do they rank the number of like? Do they have a ranking list? They have a point system, uh, which um, the more slab you have, the more points you have. Um, I'm number uh, and the books are assigned points on rarity, value, that kind of thing. Um, and I'm at number seventy-seven out of the total registry. Seventy-seven. Yeah, I'm in that, the top. Three. Yeah. Do you do you know anyone who's above you? Um, I know a couple people I chat with on Facebook that's above me. They're in the 50s. I wonder what number one is. His name is Wall Street Rebel. So I don't know what his real name is. Is he in the CGC forums? Not that I know of. Now, do you have an idea of how many slabs he has? Uh, not offhand. He probably owns like an Action Comics one and an 8.0 or something. And it's yeah, just worth a million points. I don't think he has as many books as I have. They're just very more valuable books than I have. Okay, so it's based off of value rather than quantity. For most of the part, yeah. That is pretty crazy. And it doesn't matter how many slabs you have, guys. JP Budget Collecting over here saying he has three slabs. Oh, so I'm guessing JD is saying I'm 1065, so he's 1065 on the registry. Yeah. I have like one short box and whatever's up there. So my slab collection is a baby collection. Well, that's where I started too, you know. <laughs> Speaking of starting a collection, first question from the audience was how did you get into like what was what was your entrance into collecting? What started your collecting habits? Um, well, my first collection I started when I was like 6 and uh, I, someone gave me an old Journey to Mystery Kirby monster book. And from then on, I started my whole childhood just with a passion of collecting comic books. I made my own uh, bag and boards uh, out of Ziploc bags. And uh, I started keeping them in perfect condition really early. Um, and that's what started my passion. I just loved riding my bike to the corner store, spending my money I got for my allowance for raking leaves, shoveling snow, and just buying comic books. And back then, a dollar went a long way. <laughs> um, you can come home with five books. So, and did you, know, did you know that 
these books would be valuable later in, in life? Or were you kind of just a little OCD kid where you're like, I like them pretty. Uh, OCD kid, I like them pretty. I had no idea they'd be worth anything. And would you read the books? Yes. I usually bought uh, two copies, one to read and one to uh, put away perfect. And did you, when you, so did you follow specific characters or at the time were you kind of just picking up? Cause I, I'm, I don't know when you started collecting around what year, but like, you, I mean, you're talking about journey into mystery. That was a, that was a while ago. Yeah, that was uh, back. Uh, that was a, a gift from an older friend, but uh, I started really buying heavy in 1970 was when I started buying off the rack, everything I would buy no favorite characters, just everything. Dang, you just missed the Silver Age. Yep. Yep. Hey, man, Bronze Age is the best age. Yeah. That was my age. Yeah. 90s Drek all day. <laughs> oh, just kidding. I'm sorry. So, I mean. Hey, there were good books in the 90s, too. When Shiny was Shiny was king. What's that? When Shiny was king. Yeah, man. I love shiny books. <laughs> My... I guess this kind of goes hand in hand with that question. But I mean, so that was when you started collecting and maybe reading. I didn't realize you would have started collecting that early in childhood. Yeah, that was my first collection. Yeah. When did you start collecting with a purpose? Uh, 2005. Um, I went through a bad breakup, heavy depression, hospitalization, went to go buy a gun, walked in the wrong door, walked into the comic book shop, picked up some Neil Adam uh, workbooks and Michael Turner work workbooks, and um, it seemed to help, and I wasn't depressed anymore, so that's how I got back into it. I, if you haven't heard TJ's story, um, was it was it Reggie, Reggie Simmons' contest video? No, it was just a video I made. Oh. Well, then disregard that. Go to TJ's channel. Both White Whale and TJ's links are in the description. Um, TJ has an amazing video. I guess it's kind of hard to find which video it is because you just title your videos with a date. I type it in words. I don't know why it doesn't work. <laughs> I, I found it the other day. So it, there is a video in there. You should watch all of TJ's videos because they are amazing. Watching him show off his collection is like... His slab collection is at 1882. I don't even want to know what your total comic collection would have to be, raw and slabs. Well, raw is getting kind of small. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> Running out. But I don't count them as part of my collection. Unless it's in a slab, it's not in my collection officially. That's interesting. Madness. Interesting. I guess I don't have a collection that hardly. <laughs> hey, that's just me. I mean, yeah. there's no wrong way to collect. I, I say that all the time. Yeah. I mean, I just have some self-imposed rules for me, not for anyone else. And Crazy I, standards. Crazy. So when you started collecting and when you started reading books when you were younger, um, you said you talked about Journey into Mystery. What, like At that time, what were you buying off the shelf? Like, What were your favorite stories? Uh, I really liked Spider-Man, Marvel Team-Up, Daredevil. Um, I like Green Lantern. Uh, I like um, all the Neil Adams uh, books, anything he drew. Um, I just was all, I liked the Fantastic Four, the Avengers, everything. I just, there was no particular one favorite. Well, do you have now that you are wiser and older and more, I don't know, you got a beard? Seasoned. <laughs> Seasoned. What would you say is your favorite comic book hero? Uh, right now, uh, so Daredevil is my favorite. Uh, and for Marvel, Green Lantern for DC. What if and you had to pick between them? You don't, you don't have to kiss up to the host. <laughs> I'm not going to pick. <laughs> <laughs> Which Green Lantern? Hal Jordan. My man. My man. That's the only... Real Green Lantern, sorry. Oh, boy. The Kyle Rayner fans are about to riot. Yeah, they're going to lose their minds. Back to that 90s Drek. Those Imposter. Imposter. <laughs> Jessica Cruz is my favorite Green Lantern. Get out. I'm going to delete you real quick. Okay, bye. Oh, and of course, <laughs> I was really big into the X-Men, too. Can't forget them. But... You never forget the X-Men. No. And um, 
but uh, I, I, I would write letters to Stan Lee when I was a kid. I would uh, and get responses, which was nice, handwritten from him. It was it was it was a it was a nice time to collect. It was a nice way to escape. So, I imagine it would be really cool to have witnessed a, like a lot of the creation of the of these characters, like back in the day. Like obviously, in the early seventies, you weren't quite there, um, but. I mean, there were still characters that were coming out in the 70s and like later on that you got to see firsthand. And I thought, I think that that had to be pretty cool. Yeah, the experience seeing the Punisher when he first premiered off the rack, that was that was nice. But if you if you think about it, we we still get that. Well, like the feeling of... of we just, it's not, it's not in hindsight yet. No. Nope. Yeah, but man. I feel like it's got to be different now, you know, like... You see, okay, you just Thanos thirteen. Like, is the comic Cosmic Ghost Rider really going to be the next Frank Castle? I mean, t- t- well, <laughs> spoiler <laughs> alert. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you see, like, there's. I feel like there's not as much originality with a lot of the characters nowadays. And I mean, you were like, it almost seemed like every single storyline was pumping out these amazing characters at the time. All these people are talking trash about Sinestro in the chat. Dead to me. You're all dead to me. The next was one of the best villains ever created. Oh, so speaking of villains, what was your favorite villain? Doctor Doom. And yeah, Magneto. Doctor and Magneto. Doom. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess you know that seems acceptable. I'm actually really fascinated by this shirt right now. The way it like folds, it makes them look really funny. Like it's not as scary as this when it's like this. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was I got distracted. All right. But, so. But- but as a kid buying Hulk 181 off the rack, Wolverine, you look at this character and you think, oh, that's cute. You know, it was no big thing. You know, it's, it's not like it is what it's become. It's, 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 it's just weird seeing it for the first time and not even thinking this is going to be anything quite cut up, cut out that value stamp. You know? Yeah, like, <laughs> right. I remember when I opened up my Hulk 180 and I, I didn't, I, like, I bought it specifically to. Slap the value stamp. No, I I, <laughs> I bought it to to slab and sell so I could get a, a different Green Lantern comic, and uh, I opened it up and I re- I read that last page where he's got that big that big like panel, and I still have that comic because I thought that was the coolest. And so okay, do you, is the first appearance of the Hulk one eighty one eighty? That's what I meant. Yep. It's 181. Agree to disagree. Would you say that because of this? I feel like it's just the cover. The cover is what everybody wants. The market is declared as 181. <laughs> but if, if the Wolverine had been on the cover of 180, even a little bit, like a shadow of him, that would be the book. No, quite frankly, if you want to get technical, 180 is the first appearance. He's on the last page talking. Yeah, right. and he says his name. But but the market dictates what's the first appearance, like Dark Side or Dark Seed. I hear the controversy now of how to pronounce his name. It's Dark but, Side. People are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, his first appearance, uh, the big money books, the Adams, uh, Jimmy Olsen, not forever people. Why? Yeah, and that's that's another one that I think is a little weird. But I did a I did a great video on this subject. Yes, you did. Link Great. is in the description and, and, below. And, and what was your conclusion in your video, Alec? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's all, all back. It's all chaos. <laughs> Welcome to the channel, Mr. Garrel and D Comic Queen. Congratulations, D Comic Queen, on the amazing Showcase 22. Super pumped about that for you. I got issues in the house. Our world, the world's fa- favorite troll. I'm sure he's yeah. going to have some great questions for you, TJ. Oh, Lord. But, um, yes, but remember, what I started off in 2005 with one slab, you know. And what was that slab? Uh, Avengers finale um, number one with uh, Neil Adams' cover. What? So, it, I mean, this goes in, and we're just going to keep rolling. So, your favorite artist? Neil Adams. If you... 
I mean, Neil Adams is amazing. I'm like looking at a picture of his Green Lantern right now, and it's it's beautiful. Um, do you have any favorite modern artists? Obviously, Neil Adams is still like he still makes stuff, but if you I had to pick someone, if I had to pick a new modern artist, it's going to be Bill Sank. Help me out with his name, please. Thank you. Kevin. Thank you. Uh, or uh, um, I like him. I like uh, Ross, of course, um, and. Michael Turner, who are the more modern ones I, I'm really crazy about. Um, Rest in peace. And, but it, George Perez, Jim Starlin, more of the modern ones I like a lot. Wrights is one of my favorites. JD, you'll be happy to hear that. I feel like you're naming a bunch of dead people. <laughs> only, Which... two. only two of those, yeah. <laughs> Wait, Wonder Woman's here? You, you're right there. Yeah, you need to get like a Wonder Woman, like the the headpiece or some some uh, what are they called? Bracers. Yeah, maybe a, maybe a shirt. You gonna do it? Yeah, I'll get. I'll wear a Wonder Woman shirt. I don't care. Yes. Yes. Um. Okay. So I, I have a few questions, and I I can either we can either. We'll wait and take, we'll take questions from the audience later in the show. Um, my last question that I thought was super funny. Uh, it was poor Mike who won my comic contest. Um, he asked, do you have a DeLorean and the 2099 Overstreet Guide? <laughs> no. <laughs> you don't have, you don't have a DeLorean sitting in the garage somewhere? No DeLorean in the garage. Prove it. I have a Plymouth Neon. Sorry. <laughs> I don't believe you. You can't, pro you can't prove a negative. And that's a lie, everybody. He has a DeLorean and a 2099 Overstreet. Look at the slabs behind him. He was ready. <laughs> Hashtag not Vu Hong. Uh, <laughs> uh. Poor, poor subject. All right, TJ, you ready to open some books? Well, they're already open and it's going to show them off. Okay, well, I guess that takes the fun out of it. Let's, uh, let's. <laughs> you really want to watch me open boxes? I mean, that's the best part, hearing all the crinkles and the noises and the awfulness of it. Says who? Yeah, that's a good point. All right, go ahead. <laughs> I, I always, I've been pre-opening boxes lately because of that. It's so awful. All right, TJ, I'm going to put the video directly on you so you have the floor. Well, the first one I am going to show off is my... <laughs> that's, a, that's a hot book. <laughs> hey, I, I, that's from me. Don't laugh. Oh, that's great. Let's see. Let me adjust this a little bit. Oh, I can't wait for him to send you a 9.9 .9 and he's going to be like, upgrade. <laughs> Just one second here. Let me make an adjustment. <laughs> <laughs> Always handy to have some spare slabs hanging around. <laughs> That's beautiful. Can you see it all right? I wonder who gave you that. That's a, an auction from Alec. I won, and I got a nice little T-shirt. That T-shirt is amazing. Yes. Uh, Alec, I'm super upset that you <laughs> have not told me about these. It was well, great with the jacket. So I'm, I, I am hesitant to, to share those T-shirts because I feel like people will think I made them for my channel, which is, like, weird, and I don't know. I would um, literally wear that shirt. Every, like, it is such a cool shirt. I love the design. Thank you. Well, so for those of you who don't know, I made the shirt for my comic company that I made to self-publish my comic, which TJ is now showing off uh, years ago and just reused the, the logo. Look at this cover. This is an amazing cover. I feel like I'm missing some of your videos because I didn't even know this was a thing. If I would have saw this in a comic book store on the shelf, I would think this was an image. This is how good this is. Oh, thank you. That's very kind. How's, how's the story though? You should you should see the cover of issue four that never came out. It's my favorite one. Why didn't it come out? You were self publishing. Because I ran out of money. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Nobody bought it. I will be getting these slabbed. Yeah, it's crazy. They deserve to be in the archive. Oh my god, your name's are you gonna get signature series? Uh that'll be a green label. <laughs> yeah, you'd have to get them witnessed. 
Oh. They'd have to know who I am, which yes, means... If he was at a con and CG was there witnessing, I could get a signature series. Yes. I feel like you guys live... No, you guys don't live even close to each other. Oh, no. Thanks, John. John says that artist is notorious for crossing the line and overuse of exposition. Huge problems. Yep. <laughs> Story is weak. He, he knows why I'm so critical of other people doing it, because it is self-deprecation. I also had this auction win. Oh, so nice. No t-shirt came with this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I love the stand that you use for your comics. Like, I don't know what that is. I think you've told me once before, yeah. but it's like, it's so perfect for slaps. This, this was originally, there's little speakers here and you can use Bluetooth to put your iPad on here and uh, listen to the sound. It's perfect. Listen to the sound of your comics. Yeah. Uh, have you seen the art germ cover, I think, for Catwoman 10? Who? it's a butte. It's a butte, Clark. It's a butte. But the art germ for me, I, I mean, I like a lot of the stuff, but there's a lot of stuff I really don't care for either. Yeah, I agree. But this is beautiful. When I first saw this, I just was drooling all over it. Good thing it's in a slab. <laughs> yeah. So it can be part of your collection. Yes. You can't put your DNA, DNA all over it. Yes. I am never going to open up a book to inspect to see if there's any stains on it ever again <laughs> after that accident. I just got this, which I think is a great cover. That is a really cool cover. Those uh, Detective Comics issues leading up to 1000 are heating up too, I hear. Yeah, I'm not even sure who Mark Brooks is, but I really love this cover. Mark Brooks, he's amazing. Yeah. He's going to be at Denver uh, Pop Culture Con. He did, uh, I think, right? He did this cover as well that I happen to have right here. Right? Didn't he do this? Oh, nice. Uh, I think... So. Let me put it on you. It says Brooks. Yeah, that looks... I think that is. Anyway. Alec, you're having a lot of people to tell you uh, that they they want your shirt and they want your comic. Mm -hmm. Now that you have a fault, like a, a, a base, you should probably, you know, reconsider because I want yeah. to buy your comics. You only think you do. Is it that... I haven't read it yet. That's a cool book. Let's talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Is that called deflection? I love this cover of the Magic Order. Yeah, he did a good job of tri a tribute to rights in there for Swamp Thing number one, and he he signed it, so I'm happy. That double signed. Bernie and, Wright signed by uh, the cover <laughs> artist and by the uh, digital colorist. Oh, very cool. I dig it. I've not seen that before. It's. Uh, I think they only made like five hundred of them. Oh, of course they did. I got. Dude. I got one somewhere. It's not nearly as pretty. We're slabbed. Or signed. Or signed. I can't have Reggie have the only graded copy of this in his collection on display, <laughs> so I decided to get one of these. Classic cover. Yep. The second McFarlane you've shown. Yep. I, I do like McFarlane a lot. He's one of the newer ones I like. I think it's funny that you say he's one of the newer ones you like, and I think he's an old artist. <laughs> it's all relative. Yeah. John, you just literally criticized my work. <laughs> he was kidding. It was, I'm sure it's amazing. What did he say? He said that uh, I uh, crossed the line and I use exposition too much, which are the two things that I complain the most about on Book Club. <laughs> <laughs> John. <laughs> now, I got a new copy of. Oh. In a 9.8? Yeah, from 1992, number 196, an Earl Norheim cover. That's um, a badass cover. I'm a big collector of Savage Sword of Conan. I am, uh, again, I'm 59% done with the run of like 235 books and one annual. All in 9.6 and higher. That's amazing. 
Some of those, was that one of those series where the later ones are really hard to find too? Yes, very low print. Are those slabs so big that your stand can't hold them? Okay. Did, we break your, did we break your stand? No. Oh, well then what do I know? Stand's invincible. It's also adjustable, it can spread out. So. <laughs> Versatile. Now, this I was surprised. This was one of my favorite comic book series that DC put out in the uh, 70s. The 100 page editions. Uh, six. Pardon? That's uh, real nice. Oh, for only 60 cents. And this is the Manhunter, which is the, one of my favorite costumes on a comic book character. You can't really tell it get very good from there. He's, it's kind of like a Deadpool in a way. He's got a crazy thing on his leg. Um, for holding knives. But these are really expensive now and high grade. I was surprised. Yeah, those square bound books are, I think, notorious for like spine splits and stuff, right? Yes. And and I like it because the, they have a lot of reprints in the golden age. In mm -hmm. these books. I just I just threw that information out there. I, I was seeing if it was going to be true or not. So it I'm glad you, glad you substantiated my claims. The, the square bound, just like the Giant Set X-Men number one is, and that's why it's hard to find in high grade, too. Yeah. Because they have a lot of square bound problems. But, but John, all the 100-page comics from the 70s were really some of my favorites. On the TJ's had more nine than Hugh Hefner, pop, 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 possibly more tens as well. I can speak English, I promise. Yeah. And got an old Steve Ditko, Captain Adam. Oh, yeah, and just, you know, an 8.0. It's from 1967. <laughs> Double danger with the fiery icer. That's actually fish, fish, fish and freaky asking if you how many 10.0 slabs do you have? None. I think I have like about 10 9.9s .9, though. Are you gonna show off any tonight? A one. Ah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> now would would you buy, would you buy a ten point just to have a ten point or would it have to be a specific book? It would have to be something worth having. Yeah, I, I'm not going to buy this because it's a ten. That's fair. I mean, the most affordable ten I've ever seen right now is the Batman Damned. Yeah, so, yeah, it's because there are like a billion of them. Yeah, so I don't have the Jim Lee cover, so if I find that on a ten and I got the money, I might get that someday. So. Now, Nerdy Girl was featured in Reggie a couple times, and uh, so I. She's very popular. She's she's a nice woman. We've talked before. She even shouted me out <laughs> on Reggie's show. She, Reggie asked, uh, did you see, recognize anyone in the chat? And says, TJ Watson, I recognize him from the forums. <laughs> so that's kind are, of are you are you about to one up her though? No. This is from <laughs> <laughs> this, this is from her. I put oh, I, cool. I won this in one of her auctions. Wow, look at that. This is wow. from 1962. This is Charlton Publications, their ripoff of Famous Monsters of Finland from Warren Magazines. Very rare to find, especially with their quality of paper they use. I was just going to say, I do know about Charlton and about how they are notorious for having bad paper. Yeah, their paper sucks. And uh, it's it, and this, it, even the early issues of Famous Monsters of Finland, you got to be very careful because I've bought a nice copy that probably would have been a 9.0 to 9.2 and i opened it to look in the inside and the spine split in front of my eyes oh, <laughs> no. that's how that's how fragile these books are so to find uh, an 8.0 i was very happy this is issue number four cool cover that's amazing and i also got issue number five <laughs> and a 9.0 from That's the, super cool. Decapitation cover. And this book I got from her, I had a fight for an auction. Wasn't cheap. 1940. 
Amazing Adventures Funny is number one. Good gravy. And I've been looking for a copy of this for a long time. Wow. And I believe this is the lowest graded copy on the census. And they still got it though. Yep. It still costs seven hundred and thirty three dollars. Oh God. There's only fourteen graded copies. Wow. How many? Fourteen. Wow. That's a beautiful cover. So it was twenty four people bidding for this sucker. Well, when there's only fourteen or something, there's yeah, even the if there's only a handful of people that want it, you know, you gotta go for them when you can see them. The superhero is his name was Phantom of the Fair. He this took place during the New York World Fair, where uh, he wandered the fair, stopping crime. <laughs> so. Just Regan's asking, how much is your slab collection worth? Um, well, I listed two hundred and fifty six books now on Go Collect, and they're saying that just those is worth one hundred twenty thousand. <laughs> 120 out of 1,882. Yeah. Yeah, because that's... Uh, I, I, no. no, I had that right. backwards. That math's not right. Yeah. No. I, I, there's a 256 books out of 1,880. Yeah. 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 Sorry, I've been drinking. <laughs> no problem. I need to catch up myself. What would you say your most... Exp oh, my God, that cup is... I can't even... I can't even right now. Um, what would you say your most expensive book is in your collection? Oh, Hulk 181. In what grade? 9.4. 9.4. Which is crazy to think that you have like all these old books that are really amazing and the first appearance of Wolverine is your <laughs> most expensive book. But hey, Wolverine is very popular if you haven't heard. Yep. <laughs> I, and I only spent uh, 2000 Nine hundred seventy-seven dollars for it. So Made, uh, that was a long time ago. Wise right? investment. I bought that from Worldwide Comics in a layaway. That was back when Matt Nelson from CGC actually was a co-owner of that store and had his own pressing company. Um, that was that's how long ago that was. I like that Matt and I right now are like sitting the same way but opposite. <laughs> Well, I think uh, I'm looking at our like the video, and it looks like we're sitting the same way. Oh, really? Because I'm probably flipped on my screen. <laughs> Jerk. Dang! Look at that. Yes, I I used the money I got from being uh, blackmailed for that one. <laughs> <laughs> you deserve that one. <laughs> <laughs> that story is upcoming, ladies and gentlemen. So. But I've been looking for this copy for a long time. I can never find it in 9.2 or above. Um, and um, so when this came around, I said, okay, I got some money now. I'm, I'm going to buy it. Because it's for this two years, I've only been finding 9.0s and below. So it's a black uh, cover. That's not acceptable. It's funny that like usually the person getting blackmailed is the one paying the money. So I think you did it wrong, Matt. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I did. <laughs> I did what I could, man. I did what I could. Dang it. But yeah, this is 1967, the number 57. I was, this was one of my favorite covers I had for my first collection when I was a kid. I just love that cover. Take the Time Collectibles is asking, TJ, do you own any high-grade strange, ta strange Tales number 89? Strange Tales 89, uh, first appearance of Fing Fang Fu? No, I don't own a copy. It's on my list. <laughs> It'll be there someday. Yes. But I'll probably be selling for a 5.0 on that one. That thing it'll, is expensive even a 5.0. It's a great story, Bake the Snake. And it'll it'll upset me greatly when he says it. I'm interested to hear his perspective. I got this rare four color. 845 from Dell from 1957. Very nice. I've been looking for a copy of that for a long time. Dang, that is a really cool cover. Even with dinosaurs and painted covers, I just can't resist. Like, it's like your kryptonite. You and JD, man. 
of dinosaurs too. This was a grail of mine for some time, and I fought very hard to buy that at an auction. Sheena number 10. That dude in the back's about to get wrecked. Yeah, he's dead. That guy's dead. She's about to get snatched up by this dude wearing a panther outfit. Yep. Maybe that other panther is just a dude, too. No, the other ones are real. Oh, yeah. okay. she, she's, dead. <laughs> she's dead. He's dead. Everybody's dead. But it's Sheena, so she's going to get out of it. I don't know about the dude. Yeah, this is an 8.5 for 1950. There's only two 8.5s, nothing higher on the census. Wow. Wow. That's got to feel, that always feels so, I mean, I only have one book that I can say is like the top of the census. And it feels good. It does feel good. I got a few of those. You're a jerk. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that came out wrong. I didn't mean that. Oh, man. Your collection, man, it's crazy. Another uh, comic book that's uh, not easy to find uh, in a decent grade is Cow Puncher Number One. From <laughs> <laughs> what a name! I have <laughs> never heard of that before. But one, that cover is pure Red Dead Redemption. That is Arthur Morgan shooting up some people, riding a stallion. Those and yellow and red covers, man. And it is literally titled Cow Puncher. Yep. Number one for 1947, Avon Publishers. And and I, I love these niches they have where like this one is hanging cover hanging hanging panel because that was a big thing that they always put on. Oh yeah, yeah. Pre code stuff. Just a Rican is asking, being Puerto Rican, do you have the first appearance of Vibe in Justice League America Annual Number Two? Nope. Sorry. Yeah, you're really disappointing on these questions here. I'm sorry. How sure is I? <laughs> Hashtag cowpuncher. Yeah. Now I really want a cowpuncher book. Dude, me too. I was just thinking that. <laughs> it, but it's like, it's for the same reason I want that, uh, you know, that whatever that book is. I can't think of the name of right now with the log on the cover. Rifleman 10? Yeah, thank you. Yep. The wood issue. But that book, people pay way too much for that book. So awkward. This is a copy of Sparkler Comics number six, 1942, on one of the auction. And uh, probably uh, one of the weirdest superheroes, Sparkman. <laughs> I mean, it's any worse than Dazzler or Jubilee? I will flip this table. <laughs> he has very similar powers to Jubilee. Look at the spark in that bug to death. <laughs> <laughs> so he, looks, he looks very. Sad about it too. <laughs> like, oh, I'm not happy to do this, but this giant bug has to go. Yeah, the, the Sparkler comics have a really some amazing covers when Tarzan Tarzan is featured on the cover. Because I'm a huge Tarzan nut, so Jubilee's and... grandfather. <laughs> oh. Ah, oh, dear sweet baby Jesus. I I got a nice copy of this. Oh, yeah, I, wonder, you could say that. I wonder where you where'd you pick that up from, TJ? Um from an auction recently. Listen to this craziness. All right, go ahead. No, no, you, you start. You know, you don't need to type people can hear you. We you want to hear your perspective. <laughs> I was making fun of Matt. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna need a drink. <laughs> yeah, take it, take a drink, and then let's let's hear how the story unfolds, TJ. How did this? How did this happen? Well, how did you find the seller of this comic? Uh, you messaged me uh, while you were at work that you had discovered uh, a book you've been looking for for two years. In, two years, uh, ladies and gentlemen. A nine point nine Green Lantern, Jeff Johns. Or is it Joff? Uh, no, it's Jeff. Um, Jeff John's run. And um, that, how much it meant to you that you had to get this book. It meant a lot. It meant a whole yeah. lot, TJ. A whole lot. A whole lot. And then I... It meant the world to me. Yes. But what happened? 
what happened is I was not going to let you lose this book. I was going to, and I wasn't going to tell you I was going to do it because you just argued with me about it. But you know who he did tell? <laughs> <laughs> I, I Even before the, the auction ended, I, I messaged that I was going to do this. Yeah. And I, didn't, I didn't exactly throw you under the bus deliberately, Alec. No, um, but Matt got real mad at me real quick. Oh, yeah. I, and is Don't it be mad at him. You, with, you withheld information from me. No, he was keeping keeping in confidence. He was perfectly. In his how book. much? How much would I have won this book for? You can't say that. No, you can't say that. That's that's not science. And that's yeah. what Matt keeps saying. That's not the fact of the it's, matter. It is factual. Okay, here's my perspective, though. Well, what right. if there was a third bidder in there that bid six hundred, and you lost that book? I was not going to allow that to happen. Period. Oh. Hindsight is the one thing, but we bid against each other, ladies and gentlemen. We I, had a bidding war. I guarantee there was a third bidder. Oh, there was no war. I, I just got it. <laughs> you, you, you thought I snapped him. Yes. <laughs> that book was mine in three seconds. There was no war. <laughs> and what happened when I found out? And and how did you find out? Because I am Asian and I am smart. Sometimes no, you you tricked me. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I'm a trickster. You were, you were ask, asking, God, you must all these books you got. You must have an incredible um, feedback um, score. Feedback <laughs> score, yes, on eBay, yes. And I said, well, yeah, it's, it's pretty high, hundred percent. You know, it's, it's up there. And I s sent you a picture of the, my feedback score, not knowing you're comparing it to the winning bidder's feedback score. Yeah, it matched exactly. So here, here's my theory, and I'm, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to finally make you feel a little better, Matt. So you said you were winning it at 100 whatever dollars. TJ, you bid higher than Matt's highest bid, right? Oh yeah, my top and, bid was a thousand. And your, your <laughs> Matt, your your top bid was. Did TJ beat your top bid by a dollar? Five dollars. So who's to say there wasn't someone else who bid it up to that point? eBay. Yeah, I checked oh, too. You can see that there's no other bidder. <laughs> well, then forget. Never mind. Let's rewind the tape on that one. Literally, literally five seconds before this auction is over, he was he was winning actually throughout this whole thing. I just let him, like he bid as. And I should have known because I told him about this book. And within like a few hours, someone outbid me. So this book was at $102. And then I waited until the very end. I was going to snipe this book. It was going to be beautiful. And I bid at like 300 something. And within like eight seconds left of the auction, I'm winning at $108. And suddenly I'm outbid. And like Matt, I, within... The last few seconds, I was still able to put in another bid for like my max bid of four hundred, and he still won. It was so fresh. I was so mad. Yes, I remember. Yeah, but you had to realize the intention was in case there was a third bidder, I was not going to let you lose that book. Either way, you're going to win. I mean, you, the book was going to be sent to you. I was so <laughs> mad. So mad at you. <laughs> I had to scold him like a child. I had to threaten my YouTube channel for him just to let me pay for some of this book. Yeah, and me. Don't forget me. Yeah, I threatened well, everybody. There was a lot of threatening. Well, when you were all when we were arguing about the paying back thing back and forth for six hours straight, by the way, um, I had uh, after you found out that I am the one that did it, I had messaged Alex. No good deed goes unpunished. And then that's basically what I sent you is the same message that sent Alec. And you deserved that scolding. <laughs> <laughs> and for forevermore, I will never tell you any eBay books that I am buying. But you have since then. Well, yeah, but <laughs> I already started with if I find out, and now I know your feedback score.
for I'm going to just bid like five thousand dollars and I'm just going to watch you just I don't know what you're going to do and then well, I'm going to be spending five thousand dollars on the book. There's going to be another one of a kind that I don't want you to lose. There will be all the chances there's the other ones. <laughs> this was a this one of true. a kind. This is this is very much one of a kind, and I'm very happy that you tricked me into buying it. <laughs> tricked each other. I don't know how that works. But you did get that 9.9, which was amazing. Yes. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. You actually, you were bidding against other people for this too, weren't you? Yes, there was other bidders. I, I, was was hoping, kinda... I, I didn't know. I was hoping it wasn't you. <laughs> no. So I, I was kind of surprised because I feel like this was, this book was crazier, but that one had more action. But I think, you know, it's obviously Michael Turner. No one gives a crap about Green Lantern except for me yeah. and the Comic Queen. But I knew there was a, a lot of business for this one. That's why I was worried about the other one, too. But it all well, worked out in the end. We both got 9.9s. Congratulations. And thank you. Slash no thank you. <laughs> well, next up is going to be, um, you want the original art or do you want the uh, um, epic layaway? Before we do that, Fish and Freaks Comics messaged me and said, what is your favorite 70s horror title? Man Thing. Wow, that was really quick. I love that character. And Fish and Freaks also wanted to me to show you that he too. Nice. A dragon chalice. That's very nice. Comic Books NYC asks, what are your top pre saved eBay search terms, TJ? By search terms on eBay? Your, your top pre saved eBay search term. So, like, if you have any pre-saved searches that alert you? Yeah, it, the search uh, field is full, actually. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. Um, I have search for, like, Batman 155. I got searches for 187. Batman 187. I got um, one that says space, CGC. I just have that covers all things that do with space. Uh, or space in the word. I have um, Del, uh, Del uh, no, I have Dell which covers Del Auto and Dell Comics. So <laughs> it's a twofer. twofer. Uh, Gold Key. Um, I have um, Golden Age CGC, Golden Age Horror CGC, uh, Western CGC. Um, I, it's, I have it all covered. Of course. I, I've never had anyone. So he'll, I'll ask about a comic or something, and he will send me a, a screenshot and like for me, I just like scroll through my watch list because it's not that big. He has to actually search through his watch list. He can literally type Supergirl and have like a bunch of a bunch of stuff pop up. Yeah, because this full too. My my uh, that my watch what list. Is, what is the max you can have on a watch list? I think it's like fifty. Really, I feel like it was. You you have a lot on there. There's no way it's just fifty. Yeah, it's, it's, it might be more, but it's not much. Well, then I feel stupid. You say that a lot. <laughs> wait, wait, just so just a Rican is about to leave. So let me go grab his book. Hi, Hi TJ. Sorry, someone uh, need Mo Comics was messaging me about my my comic. I guess he needs more of them. Just Rican, don't leave. So I. We are, I'm sure a, a bunch of us get boxes a lot from eBay. And so I thought I just got another box from eBay. And, <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know what this is. I have zero idea. So I popped it open sitting in my truck <laughs> at work. And uh, it turns out it was from Just a Recon. He sent me JLA number one. This super cool cover. It is a cool cover. And I was like, <laughs> I'm like, I didn't order this. And then I remembered... Uh, he actually showed me the comic and asked, like, hey, do you have this? So now, now I have this. So thank you. you can add it to your HAL collection. Yeah, it's uh, it's getting bigger for sure. This is, I had actually never seen this cover before. So very, very cool pickup, Just a Regan. Thank you so much. I'll leave that there. Anyway, uh, have a good night, Just a Regan. Thank you so much for hanging out. Back to you, TJ. That was a little intermission. <laughs> <coughs> you want to see the original art the next, or do you want to see the... Um... Yeah, no way. Original art, or what? Uh, epic layaway. 
I, I say break it up. We've been seeing a lot of books. Let's see the original art. And then I've already made the decision. All right. Disregard. Uh, We're going with the art. Pardon? Going with the art. Oh. One of Matt's least favorite characters. He's garbage, but that is a super nice panel. Yeah, yeah. it's really cool looking. I, I, I fell in love with that when I saw it. That's a really cool pi uh, picture of Simon Baz. Is that guy Gardner there? Uh, I believe Ooh, it is, yes. Yeah. Who's the artist? Jack Hubert. Very cool. It's funny, too, when I, I usually buy original art, I'm not really concerned about who the artist is, as long as that touches my soul. And I said, oh, I got to have that. Yeah, that's a really cool pose right at the top. Yeah. What's he looking at? Um, don't know. <laughs> I, I think we'd have to buy look at the page before it. But it's a, it's a nice page. Now, this, art, this guy... Um, I bought this from him, and he got uh, a family emergency, so I got didn't get it for weeks. But he sent me this for being patient and waiting and being nice about it. Now, this is not a piece of original art. No, this I love is, that. This is a, no, I, I would have freaked out if it was. <laughs> this is a, a production uh, copy of original art. And when you're buying original art on eBay, you got to be careful what you're buying, because if it says production. It's not the original thing. It's a copy. It's a nice copy. Very yeah. cool piece. That's sick. Very now, cool this piece. One, though, it's my first original art cover. This cover. Now, this is the way it was shown on eBay. And then I looked up the cover. And eBay, I found out he was showing it upside, upside down. down. Yeah, it goes like this. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, it looked good. Yeah. Wow. That's that great. Amazing. And this is uh, 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 Clark Williams is the artist, and I like the way he has his name in the letters. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Clark and was it Will Williams? Yep. Yeah. He uh, works for DC now. This was uh, Strange Heroes number, I believe, four uh, cover um, from one of the independent. I think it might have been the claim. I'm not sure what the company was, but I really like this. Yeah, that's, that's a cool cover. It was my first cover this time around. The only other cover I ever owned was a George Perez cover back in my first collection. Jeez. Which I really regret not having anymore. Did you see uh, George Perez's? Um, it was JD who who got the email that said, "Sorry, JD, this is probably a sore subject." Got the email saying that uh, George Perez only had fifteen spots for a commission, and it was like released at midnight, and in like four seconds, it was sold out. Yeah, and over three hundred people apply for one. When I used to go to Pittsburgh Comic Con, he was always there and he started doing charity raffles to be able to buy a sketch. So you'd have to win the raffle. You have to buy tickets to win the raffle, then buy the sketch. Yeah. That is awesome. And I mean, terrifying, but it's really cool if you get it. Yeah, I entered a couple of times. I, I did not win. <laughs> back, in, back in the 70s, late 70s, um, uh, there's a newspaper called The Buyer's uh, comic, comic book buyer's guide and uh he had an ad in there that he was selling original art and i just called him up <laughs> <laughs> and i wrote him a check and for 75 dollars for the uh cover Jeez. for uh, marvel two and one the one with the thing and stingray and wow. uh it's 75 dollars wow do you imagine now but back then that was, 75 dollars original art was just a novelty no one wanted it back then yeah, that's crazy yeah, it's not like it is today uh, at all. I had Joe Kubert uh, um, double splash pages for Ragman and Tarzan, and and 
double splash pages that were incredibly beautiful on my wall. I had George, uh, sorry, uh, John Byrne X Men pages. Wow. It's Kurt Swan Batman. I think I only have two or uh, no, three pages, original pages. I love them. Like, I can totally see why people choose to collect pages and original art over comic books. There's one right there. Hold on. Let me click on you. Mm. Dang, I, f I feel like I haven't seen you at all this whole time, Alec. Hello. <laughs> you see the piece of jewelry that's hanging out of his beard? It's not. It's, it's jewelry. No. Yeah, buddy. See? He said, Nick, if his last video gets 50 likes, he's going to braid his beard and put jewelry. Nope. I did not, definitely did not say that. Yes, he did. Everybody heard it here first. That is, that is a link is in the description below. Strong, strong on the negative. <laughs> Frazetta cover OA sold today for over 500K. Jeez. Yep. Good Lord. Did you have any Rob Liefeld study and feet art? <laughs> no. Oh, whoopty bird! You're special. <laughs> for, for Zeta, though, he has a, a, a museum. I think it's in New Jersey that actually also sells prints and stuff, and original stuff. And he's had the same kind of a buying power that like Salvador Dali has, or some of the other big artists that's not in comic books. I mean, original art is considered art now. Yeah. And it's it's as it should. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Rod asked, Matt, what's up with the waxing? So Melody and I are actually spending this weekend at Keystone um, for a little vacation. And uh, yeah, I definitely, she, she has wax. It's planned. We will take before and after pictures. I am not live streaming her waxing my back. That's, <laughs> that's not happening. <laughs> so you will get before and after pictures. I'll post it in a video, but because that way you'll know, like, okay, his back really wasn't that hairy. But you'll get to see it. Thanks, TJ. You're welcome. That's another thing that's your fault. <laughs> hey, you didn't, you did, much like I am not agreeing to what you're proposing right now, you did not have to agree to that. Uh, Alec will braid his beard for 50 likes. Nope, negative. No, if the video gets 50 likes, Alec will braid his beard. And it was actually your idea in your video to do that, and that you said it was a joke, and then you pushed it, and people did it. I, I don't think Melanie thought it was a joke. I didn't think it was a joke. Yeah, but the, the difference here is that you said it yourself, and I have not said it. Yes. There's been no verbal contract. Give the people what they want, Alec. I don't think the people want it, just you. Let's get back to the show. <laughs> okay. Well, another piece of original art I've gotten is this little that is so cool tj watson that is from jd very it's, nice it's very nice i really like this a lot oh, for a second i just got really panicked that you could see what i'm working on for you back in the background but you can't <laughs> so yeah, i think that's JD. Really i really appreciate it not, not enough green lantern jd hey he has daredevil in there i'm happy <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And uh, well, I think the only thing left is a little big layaway. Let's do it. Well, let's start with the raw book because it's not part it's, of your collection. Not yet, but it will be. <laughs> It'll be slabbed. Um. I've wanted this book since I was a kid and saw the cover of the first time in the uh, Overstreet Price Guide. Yellow and red. It's yeah. uh, Silver Street Comics number 11. I believe it's 1940 and uh, could be 42, but it's very hard to find. There's only, let's see, I wrote it down. There's only 10 copies on the registry. Jeez. And, and this is a, uh, the seller who is really good at uh, uh, grading is says it's going to be between three and a four. So this will not be the worst copy on the uh, census. Nice. That's nice. And I fought very hard in the auction for that one. 
I have a question for you, TJ. Uh -huh. Maybe you can lend some insight into this. Why do sellers at this point sell a book like that raw? Why would they not grade it themselves? He actually forgot to send this in because everything else I bought from him would be graded, and he just said, oh, screw it. I'm going to put it on there. Hmm. He probably would have gotten more money for it was graded. Yeah, I assume. Especially if there's only 10 on the census. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, it was $450 that I wanted for. But I think it would have went for a six if it was graded or higher. It almost looks like he's barefoot, but then it, he's got boots on. He's wearing booties. Yep. And this is also uh, uh, an early appearance of the original Daredevil. Very nice. cool. It's somewhere. It won't drop. I also, from uh, the same seller in an auction, got my first Disney book. Wow, look at that. 1944. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Now, I, I, I've i been wanting to get some Disney in this collection for a while because I think the archive is missing some representation. So this is my first one. And there's other ones because Disney did do some World War II covers. So I want to get some of those. You know, yeah, Mickey cool. Mouse is holding a thing, buy war, war bonds, that kind of stuff. <laughs> they weren't actually, actually fighting Nazis. Right. <laughs> Dwarves beating Nazis down. That'd be great. That would have been cool. Although there is, I have um, up here. Oh, wait, this way. There we go. Oh, this is hard. Uh, somewhere over here, there's a bunch of tins that are Disney archive um, tins of old uh, stuff that you can't really find anywhere else. And one of them is a like Disney at war and it has a bunch of war cartoons they did. I picked up the first, the first appearance of Snow White today, thanks to Alec. Who? So that was the comics with kids. Uh, what does that even mean? What's the first appearance of Snow White? Uh, Fables number one. Oh, cool. Uh, wow, that's a big, that's an awesome book. This is the first appearance of the Prowler. Got that Spider Man action 9.2. Nice. Yep, from 1969. Great uh, John Romita cover. Uh, I think he uh, does some of the best covers from the uh, 60s and 70s. Gorilla Grodd is asking Does TG, do you have a Flash 106? No. One of these times you're going to say yeah. <laughs> hey TJ, do you have an ASM seventy eight? Uh, okay, you got to refresh my memory. What one is that? It's the one right over your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to throw you a softball. <laughs> Drink. <laughs> that was awesome. You got him good. So maybe you do have a one hundred six because you you keep sending me books that you find. And you'd be like, hey, I didn't even know I had this book. I, I, oh, I just got a notification like 10 minutes ago that uh, your AOK -okay is in your state. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's scheduled to be arrived tomorrow. I'm probably going to have to come home from work to make sure it gets in the house. That's going to be... But, but this this one is... Uh, I just, this is in great shape. And I, I'm very happy that the seller, even though it's an auction win, lets you put them in a layaway. Yeah. That's very rare. The guy is super nice. Now, these two books are both from 1940. They're both very hard to find. Uh, they're both by MLJ Magazines, which later becomes Archie, of course. Oh, cool. This is zip number two. Now, the story behind uh, that um, Silver Streak and the Zip comic here and the next one I'm going to show and others I bought months ago from this guy, these came from a private collection in Kansas that he found. So it was original owner collection. So someone kept these all these years and uh, recently just decided to part with them. So they've been in a box in Kansas for... Also, Mr. Satan. <laughs> <laughs> Steel Sterling is a superhero. I, I guess it's number one from the last time I bought from this guy. I like to see him versus Superman. That dude looks strong. 
John's comments with kids said that AOK increased the state of Massachusetts's value by 12% when it arrived. <laughs> or conversely, you could say its value increased by 12% because this state costs a lot of money. Uh, Take the Time Collectibles asked, what grade is your Vampirilla annual number one? Nine point... One sec. Nine point something. I think it's 9.2. Careful. Oh, God, please don't knock over. No, I'm waiting for an avalanche. Nine point two. Nine point two. I was putting some vampirellas today to do a no fishing as required video soon. Damn legs. Keep, keep talking trash about, about Zatanna. See what happens. Damn legs. <laughs> One thing I learned about Zatanna today that even her slightest appearance is making books go up. Yeah. Her face is, oh, it's a bad drawing of her face, but it was a comic book. I can't remember <laughs> what it was. Uh, it was from the Silver Age, but uh, just a little picture of her face. Yeah. Uh, and, and she's inside the book. And it. Um, it's her third appearance. Oh, yeah. It's, it, it's her, it's it's her first expensive. appearance on, on a cover. It's, it's just her face. And it's not a good drawing of her face. No, no, it's not. Um, a mi Mystic U is going up in value, which. Pff. Don't even lie to me. Are you kidding me? I saw it in a shop. Well, someone was asking for money for it. I don't know if it, people are buying it at that price, but it's such a bad comic. But it's also got covers by uh, Totino Tedeschi or whatever his name is. So that, that guy's heating up. It's so ugly. It's such a bad story. Well, that movie has been fast tracked, so that's why it's happening. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, the Zatanna movie or Justice League Dark? Uh, Zatanna movie. Oh my God, that'd be so great. Actress is going to have to learn how to say everything backwards. I mean, this Vampirella annual is really expensive, but I have never liked that cover. Her face is a little weird. Yeah, yeah it's kind of creepy. Yeah, but this is a super expensive book in 9.2 or higher. I feel like any of those comics in 9.2 or higher are expensive. So who, who asked that question? That was Take the Time Collectibles. Oh. How did they know I had one? Because <laughs> you're... A big Vampirella fan, and maybe they uh, jumped to the conclusion. Yeah, I have, uh, I think my Vampirella Warren collection is like 76% done. What grade? Wow. One in. Uh, 9.2. Do you want to see it? Yes. <laughs> How is that even a question? Like, of course I want to see it. While, uh, while he's getting up, you want to tell a story about your Vampirella number one, Matt? Let's uh, let's not talk about that. Cool, I'll tell the story. Nope. Okay, never mind. This one. You put the camera on yourself. Oh, sad face. If you go back to my top fifty comics, uh, this has a cover. Had had a cover. Oh, there it is. Look. The presser done the presser done effed up on that. Nah, it wasn't the presser's fault. It was his equipment. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's a well, lazy carpenter that blinked his tools or whatever. Oh, it still hurts. I don't Damn. I don't know. I don't know the guy. I'm sure he's a lovely person. Nine point two. Had a mistake. Mm. I'm really surprised how much this has gone up in the last two years. It's crazy. But I bought this for like uh, twelve hundred dollars like twelve years ago. That seems fairly reasonable. And now they're going for like thirty five. Yeah. Now you get like a seven point oh for probably about the same price. Yeah, seven point oh is going for a thousand now. I keep track of it. <laughs> Very nice. Now this is one of my favorite Vampiro covers though. Yeah, I love that one. That's a great one. And there's only a few copies of 9.8. I didn't, oh, I didn't even see that. that. Holy crap. That is, that is mind-blowing. I was busy looking at them everything and forgot about <laughs> the great. You were busy looking at them hips. Yep. Them knees. Hey, those are really well-done knees. Yeah. This is a really... <laughs> the, the, size, the latest size show statue of her is based on this picture. Uh 
I just saw an amazing sketch by uh, the one I, I think I showed you, TJ, the one of uh, Vampirilla by Art Germ. Yeah. Oh, dear God. Ah, oh, so good. Now, the other book I got, uh, the last one, The Layaway, was something I never thought I'd own, is Pep, Pep Comics number eight. Hey, now. Wow. Waiting for Diaz to freak out. I was not ready for that. So, and it has the shield. I mean, it has really a cool cover. It's not a war cover. Can you see that all right? Yeah. Yeah, but that chick's get, about to get branded. Yep. No, she's not because Pep is going to save her. <laughs> Actually, that's the shield. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So what what was the I, I I didn't know like realize like I didn't know much about Pep Comics until fairly recently. Can you do you know any like the history and stuff behind it? Well, they started off uh, in the in the thirty nine and forties as uh, basically superhero books and basically very patriotic. A lot of war covers were with them, and then they introduced in the later issues Archie. And uh, Archie became very popular after the war, more popular than the superheroes. So it just changed over to Archie Comics. Was that number twenty-two? That was the first appearance, I believe. Yeah, and I mean, I can I can see that because I, I feel like the same way that Spider-Man was really popular was because he was a superhero, but he was also very relatable. A lot of these old superheroes, like, were not. Whereas Archie hit with the fans and hit with the the young the youth of, of the America pretty easily. Yeah, I'm sure after the war, they also didn't want to think about war. No, they didn't want superheroes anymore. They wanted horror. They wanted cowboys. They wanted uh, Archie. Yeah. Good old ginger kid. And uh, then um, the only the only superheroes that survived that whole purge was pretty much Wonder Woman, Superman, and Batman. Everything else was gone. Captain America. Nope, it was gone. Really? Yep. Evan yeah. Evangelon Evangeline says, "You mean like the shield predates Captain America?" Um, I'm not sure. I, I should have done research on that. I think he might be the second uh, patriotic uh, superhero. I think Captain America might have been the first, or the other way around. I'm not sure which, but he's an early um, patriotic hero. Very cool. And uh, Comic Books NYC is asking. Do you insure your entire collection or only parts of it? None of it. None of Ooh, it. Living on the edge. Yeah. What was your uh, your address again there? <laughs> <laughs> Insurance on this collection is very expensive, and you have to pay it in cash all at once. Oof. It's not like uh, Homer's insurance where you can pay monthly. Yeah. It's all one lump sum. That's crazy. So, yeah, we live on the edge. You can't fit those in a in a safe there. You got to get a safe room. Get bigger locks, TJ. Oh no, I have an alarm system. Oh, I have booby traps. I have booby traps. I have an alarm system. I have I have magical uh, setting booty traps. Yeah, I have magical wars all around the house. I'm good. <laughs> um, and that was it. I hope you're not disappointed. Are you going to open up my box? Okay. I want to see you cry on, on live television. Why should I if you don't cry for my stuff? It's because I'm not sensitive. No. Oh, <laughs> I am. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fight it tooth and nail. Well, this, this is the card. Hmm. You know where I got that card? Um, it was in a loot crate. Oh. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm never going to use this for anything, so I'll send it to TJ. I drew that actually. I've seen, I've seen, I've seen you draw. No, it'd be a little stick, stick figure with some web under the arm. <laughs> the one I sent to Reggie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was bad. You want me to read it? Uh, I don't remember what I wrote. <laughs> yes or no? Is it bad? It doesn't seem so, but I haven't read the whole thing yet. All right. Well, go ahead if you want to. Merry belated Christmas, TJ. 
I hope you enjoyed the comic as much as I did. One of my absolute favorites. I know it's going to be in a good home, even though it might feel out of place amongst all those 9.8s <laughs> in the collection. I can't thank you enough for everything you have done for me and this community. You truly are the heart of our YouTube family. May 2019 bring you great happiness and awesome slabs. Old Hill, the Slab Dragon. Um, very respectfully, Matt, a.k.a. Thanatos. So we're using our superhero names now. Yes, <laughs> did, you, did you think he wasn't going to know who it was? <laughs> I mean, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, also, sorry, I didn't have uh, anything to seal this with. Oh, yeah, sorry. I didn't. I don't have wax. I don't have a. I don't have any of that. It's fine. I think I have a niche on that. And you actually wrapped the book with wrapping paper. Yeah, you got to show the wrapping. Huh? It's beautiful. It is beautiful. And you had it addressed to me. <laughs> this is officially the only Christmas present I got this year. Uh oh. From anyone. <laughs> I gotta be careful with the paper so I can reuse it. I hope you like a taste of your own medicine. <laughs> <laughs> you jerk. <laughs> you just got TJ Watson. This is one of your favorite books. How can you just send this to me? Because that, that's a question that we ask a lot, TJ. But those are in my it. collection. <laughs> you deserve it more than anyone. I don't know what it is. Go ahead, turn it around. Let's see some. But, but you you've done a video on this book. I know. That's one of my favorites, and I'm I it couldn't be in a better collection and of someone who will appreciate that comic more than you. Oh, how does it feel to be, to be speechless right now? Oh, yeah, get those, get those <laughs> out. Thomas, <laughs> Thomas Tissues. <laughs> I got the Jurgen somewhere. I mean, you're not, if you're a Turok fan, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sometimes it's just about the book, you know. Oh. I saw that on your want list, and I'm like, oh, TJ done screwed up. <laughs> I, don't have, I don't have any of these comics on his, on his want list except for one. And it's one that I'm happy to part with if it's in your collection. But this was in your top fifty. That was in my top ten. Well, I think it was. I think I forgot it, and I had it in my top twenty. But that that was one of the first grails that I ever went for because I am a huge Turok fan. But I think that you will appreciate it more than I will. You, you did a Bueller unboxing thing. Well, what was that? Oh, oh. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you still have Turok 1, though, right? I mean, This is course. Turok 1. Of course I've got <laughs> Turok 1. I've got a few of those. You bastard. <laughs> I almost sent you my copy of uh, the second, second appearance of Turok. But it's not in a very good condition, and I'm like you. That would that that would ruin this. You just need, I mean, even though a 4.5 is not the best, but still a really. I mean, there's only I think a hundred or so of those in the census too. It's golden age. You know that I don't have a standard for golden age. This is perfect. This is beautiful. Oh, nice your job, man. Golden age book. You're welcome. Hey, no, no take backsies. I uh, no. You can't sell that. You can't give it away. I'm not going to. <laughs> this is in my forever collection. I will never upgrade this. Good. If I ever get a better copy, I know where I'm sending it. <laughs> <laughs> now you done screwed up, that, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I have a second one. It's a. It's. I have it. It's a nine point five. <laughs> it's a nine point seven and a half. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. You're welcome. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too. Talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. How does it? It feels good. I'm glad. I'm glad Alex here to witness this. I'm glad this is 
This is getting saved to YouTube forever. Yeah, I didn't know that was happening. I don't think I told anyone what I sent him. Did I? No, no, you didn't tell me. <sighs> yeah. You pulled a dragon on the dragon, JP Budget Collecting says. Well, it's already you. pressing everything for you, too. Just wait for your birthday. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I'm moving. It's already, it's already happened. I'll be gone next week. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I don't think I got any more questions for you. Do you have any comics that you're currently searching for? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not telling you now. <laughs> oh. I have a grills list on my Instagram. <laughs> you hear that, ladies and gentlemen? TJ Watson has a grill list on his Instagram. You can you can put are you gonna put X's on it? Uh no, I I don't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That would be cool if I knew how to do that. Pope Cerebus the first asks TJ, how do you conceptualize your collecting? Obviously, it's personal. But how do you put comics in their rightful cultural perspective? That's a deep question. I like mm. it. I think they're uh, pop culture history um, that reflects society at the time that they're published and that they should be kept, uh, revered, and protected. I consider myself a archivist uh, preservationist. I'm building an arc for comic books, trying to build a museum quality collection to the best as I can with my resources. I think you're probably already there. Yeah, you've done a pretty good job. I have so much more to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no so kidding, JP. JP's like, you guys are going to have to stop making want lists. Yeah, no, no 2020 yeah. want lists from this guy. My 2019 want list was full of books that are under like 20 bucks. Ha! Joke's on you, TJ. Oh, <laughs> trust me, your birthday present wasn't under $20. Well, I'm not going to live here next week. So, <laughs> whoever lives here next will get that book. Uh, Take the Time Collectibles is asking TJ, do you own a Captain America number 74? No, <laughs> I don't own any uh, Golden Age Captain Americas. Unless you're talking about the new run, I don't really have a lot of new books. Yeah, I'm, in, I'm interested to see what your collection's going to look like in a few years. How, On average, how many slabs do you think you acquire per year? 80 to 139. That That's was very good. specific. That's so specific. <laughs> and, and very quick to respond. <laughs> um, on uh, my... Um, um, Photo page. I actually uh, every time I buy a new book every year, I put post it in a, a, a file that I can bring up for the I, the ball. All these in 2017, all these in 2018, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and the numbers are right there. Hmm. There you go. Book service says, "I love I love you that much more." That was the answer I imagined. I am of a similar mind. I just don't slab any. Nothing wrong without slabbing. The only thing I've ever had a problem with is the people that uh, put down people to do. Yeah, I think it's all preference. People, I mean, we won't even get into that. It's that's a that's a story. That, that's a different show. Yeah. But uh, let's. I, I'm sure you guys. It's pretty late for you guys over there. Did you want to see if we can get a few more questions, or are you guys happy with uh, what happened tonight? You want to. I can take a few more questions if you have the time. All right, we'll give we'll give the clock a few minutes if we have any more questions for TJ the Slab Dragon. This is the first of hopefully many times that he is on my channel. Um, don't forget if you have not already subscribed to him, he's only at like three hundred subs. That's stupid. So go to the description. Click on his link and subscribe to this yeah, man. The fact that I almost have twice as many subscribers as TJ is just, that's that's a crime against YouTube. <laughs> well, that's the reason I wanted to do it on uh, your ch channel, Matt, is because I wanted people to see it. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I love, I love shouting you out. I like, I was so happy. I don't know why. Like I, I, I posted that picture on Instagram of 
you amongst your your many slabs and i don't how much you you went up like 200 followers on instagram in like a week yep it went for like 423 to like 650 that was amazing <laughs> if, if you guys don't know tj legitimately like legitimately has probably the, the best collection in the youtube comic community in my opinion i mean like Obviously, there are guys like Lee Kirby Ditko and stuff. Or oh God, <laughs> but like people that are, I feel like are active in our community and and all that stuff. Like you, it, it's mind blowing to see the mountains behind you. We have quite quite a few collect uh, questions. questions come in. Yeah. Okay, so looks like take the time collectibles throwing in. What is your favorite piece of original comic art that you own, TJ? Uh, probably. Um... Do you want me to go grab it? Sure. If it's convenient, but if it's yeah, it's if not you that far away, don't worry about it. But it's not that far away. Talk amongst yourselves. Oh God, getting <laughs> up. <laughs> Hi, Matt. Hey. How you doing, buddy? Pretty good. Are those plaid pants? Yeah, they're my nighty pants. Ask me to trim this beard. They look super comfortable. I've not trimmed my beard in a very long time. They're all right. The, I snapped the little tie for the waistband the other day. <laughs> we have fun chats. I enjoy. I enjoy this. Remember the other night when we talked about melon for like ten minutes? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Oh, it's like playing hot stacks over stacks. Oh, question for me: Have I read Wrong Earth? I have not. Take the time, collectibles. Who is that by? Oh, Lord. Yeah, a lot of questions coming in now. All right, maybe we should slow down the questions, guys. <laughs> let's, let's answer a few first. But we you know, do. Since they were announcing um, uh, Nightmare is going to be the villain in the next Doctor Strange movie, and everyone's using that one image of him in the thumbnails. What? Oh, I gotta move it to you. I I own the art for that image. There was oh, the crap! That is amazing. Yeah, TJ sent that to me the other day. I was like, "What? Holy moly!" Yeah, because this is shocking. Everywhere you see, this is the thumbnail they use, and I own the art for it. So, don't know how to pronounce his name. Can you see it? George. Jorge, Jorge Molina. Oh, yeah. not, not George then. <laughs> George. That was a nice piece. All right, let's get into some questions real quick. Oh, my God, you're going to keep showing amazing pieces of original art. Is that Red Sonia? Yep. Oh, dear sweet baby Jesus. Where's the Jorgens? <laughs> Look at all those bones. <laughs> that was not meant to be a double entendre. Nice. I'm going to send you some protective top loaders for these, TJ. What the heck are you yeah, doing? Yeah, it's making me nervous. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Issue said, question one, how? Oh, my God. What the hell? But but how? You have like literally an entire comic worth <laughs> original art. It's <laughs> a real thick one. Yeah, you're getting you you're getting a box of top loaders for Christmas. I think you need to give him we need to get him that sooner than that. Or, or like I have a I have a book that you can just slide those into so it's like a like a portfolio. Cause those should all be what, eleven by seventeens? Yeah. Yeah, I have some of those portfolios. All right. This well, is a uh, Exo Man of War. Yeah, heck yeah. Dang, and you have some awesome pages too. Green Lantern and the Phantom Stranger. Wow, that is a that Phantom Stranger looks badass. 
Look at that stack. What the? F I love this one. Hey, you gotta, you gotta bring it down a little bit. Yes. Moist. Nice red one. Is Gross. <laughs> Uh, this one is a Solar page. Miss Roboto is saying, TJ, please pick, post pics of those on your Instagram when you they get... They are. To They're all listed on Instagram. Uh, they are all listed on his Instagram. And before you ask, TJ does not sell anything. Nope. Trust me, we have tried. And he I just, don't trade either. He doesn't even trade, which is also sad. I'm going to copy some of these questions so we can ask. Got my giant size man thing? <laughs> wow. Oh. I like comic books NYC how he like the giant question before his questions. Well, if profit ever makes it big, I got a nice profit one. Hey. That is a 90s piece if I have ever seen one. <laughs> <clears throat> I had a, 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 a um, Daniels piece from Spawn, but I, I don't think it was in here. All right, so, while you're showing these off, why don't you answer some questions? Okay. Oh, here it is. Uh, John's Comics with Kids is asking, what advice would you give to new collectors? Um, start with old stuff. Start with the best grade you can afford and um, buy what you like. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's literally like, that should be on a t-shirt. Buy what you like. I like Valiant books. Well, you should probably not collect those. Why not, man? Ride, not. Ride Zero is heating up. Yeah. <laughs> That is going to be big if that movie's good. All right. And did you not just listen to your own and TJ and my advice? This is a good point. <laughs> oh, it's falling. Oh, Got yeah. It. yeah. I need to. We need to get you something. It's it's driving me nuts, TJ. I can't. I can't look at him. Uh, Why aren't they in top loaders, TJ? Because eventually, um, <laughs> let's talk about this. I will be right back. I'll show you what I'm doing. Oh, geez. He's paper paper mache, doing paper mache with original comic art? <laughs> no, collage. What? I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking that too, Comic Books NYC, Comic 84, Comic Head 84 vibes. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Oh, drops everything. Man, TJ's collection just makes me feel inadequate. Uh, as Pope Service said, I just passed an Eternal Warrior 4. Is that a key to have picked up? Yes, it is. It is the first appearance of Bloodshot. Well, I have to admit, when I was a kid, I took a lot of Johnny Says X-Men 1s and 94s and made a collage out of them. Oh, that's what I'm doing with them. Getting them framed. Yeah. Yeah. That's not cheap. Well, but in I'm, the meantime, you can still protect them. Yeah. In the yeah. meantime, we are still going to, I'm going to send you a book. I'll, I'll Amazon it to you. Oh my God. You almost knocked over four color five ninety six. I almost died. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you almost knocked over a cable. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Uh, it's a good thing I wore pants this time. Uh, uh, Eternal, like, Eternal Warrior 4 is probably <coughs> a hotter book, uh, or like certainly was um, back in the day than the first appearance of Rai. First appearance of Rai is in um, Magnus Robot Fighter 5. It's a flip book. Yes. I know too much about Valiant. <coughs> and you, that book's right over here. 
And just to be clear, Rye Zero is the first appearance of Bloodshot as Rye, not the first appearance of Bloodshot. You were asked, do you have any other silver streaks on your want list, TJ? Uh, number seven. Number seven, everybody. Number seven. Uh, comic Books NYC says, I, I'm sorry, I'm answering all the bad questions. I have an Eternal Warriors uh, 9.8 and a Rye Zero Glossy 9.8. wonder if I should sell and lead up to the movie or not, if it's a long-term growth book. I think you'd sell them to me right now for cheap. <laughs> I think that's the number, number seven. It's on uh, uh, Metropolis Comics has a 7.0 for sale for like $4,500. Carlito Classico says, I used a Turok as a tourniquet once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, did you hear that, everybody? We are on the go for our number seven. Okay, so I, I didn't write down who wrote these. I'm sorry. Someone asked, as someone who doesn't appreciate slabbing, can you please explain what the appeal is for you, TJ? Why would you recommend it? Uh, my appeal for it is that, one, it looks cool. Um, when I first, in 2005, when I got my first slab, I said, this looks really cool. It is protected better than just a bag and board can because God knows you can still bend and uh, color break in a bag and board. Yeah, you don't have this. Um, and... Uh, it's uh, just well protected. You know what grade it is. I mean, a lot of people say, well, it's subjective. It's not. You have three professional graders and a head grader going over their results. It's, it's certainly less subjective than someone on eBay saying, hey, I think this is a four. Yes. And then you get it, and it's got a huge page you know, missing. You don't know how many times when I started buying raw books, um, the they say, oh, this is going to be a near min plus, and it's an 8.0 at best. You know, yeah. it's, it's, this way you, you know what you're getting, pretty much. Uh, but it's preserved, it's protected, and um, that's why. And it looks cool. Yeah, especially if, you know, like you said earlier, you're looking to build a, an archive or a museum of sorts. I think it's, um, you know, a, a museum is not going to have people flipping through the books and you, you know, most of these books are digitized nowadays as well. So uh, their interiors are preserved. And so you want to preserve the actual physical items. Um, I mean, that's my feelings on it. Yeah. I mean, even uh, uh, Alex books you sent me um, your, your own book, I'm going to be treating them with kid gloves. <laughs> I have plenty more. Don't worry. I'll send you, Send you a pile of them if you want. Yes. I'm very picky when I read books. It's very, very Oh, yes. No, I am too. I only read digital now. I can't. I can't. I can't read digital. Oh, it's easy. Um, Comics NYC asked, what percentage of your collection is the new era CGC slab versus the old? Uh, and I, I would like to add to that, which do you prefer? Um, and I guess you could break it down at all three eras, really. Um. Okay. Hang on one second. <laughs> Talk some about yourselves. <laughs> oh. oh God! Please be safe. Yeah, I'm just. Every time he gets up, I'm worried a stack is going to fall down for some reason. When he sent me that picture, the the thumbnail that I used for this video was a picture that he sent me, and it's literally him covered in slabs, holding a, a Hulk one, his Hulk one eighty one. And it says, help, I've fallen. I can't get up. And I was like, is that you? <laughs> it's like, yes. Like, oh, man. That's crazy. Well, maybe I'm going to do a video on I'll get to that second part, Comic Books NYC. I figure I'll, I'll, I'll warm them up for it. I thought I had some uh, of the debacle slab here somewhere. I'll have to go look for that some other time and do a video on it. But this is the one, the, uh, not the original. Uh, the original label ones, the oldest ones. Oh my God, is that a uh, yellow label, Michael Turner? Yeah, yeah. Isn't it pretty? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! I feel like I've never seen one of those. Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure they're out there everywhere, but damn, that is really nice. Yeah, yeah. it's a great cover too. Uh, but that's. Uh, the original labels, the case is pretty much the same. The label would suck. But yeah, the original label is horrible. Yeah. 
Um, but this, uh, the case is pretty much the same. And I, these are good cases. They're uh, 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 more sturdy than the CBCS case or PGX case, um, and, but not by much. There, there's not a big improvement from this case to their cases. It, or, but the new cases, these suckers. They're, they're, they weigh a ton. These are brilliant. I've never been so happy. Matt Nelson designed this um, and um, from CB, CGC. It's really thick. Uh, it has all the inner well stuff. Uh, I love the edges on them. All, all the cases do. They stack better. The information is easier to read. And it's clearer. So this new case, I want to re-slab all my books, which is probably never going to happen in my lifetime. But that's what I would like to do. Madness. All right. Second part of that question, which you kind of mentioned, was uh, when you when you do purchase, like, are you do you feel comfortable buying CBCS books, and do you, do you reslab them or do you keep them as is? I will reslab them if I buy them. Um, I I rarely do. It has to be a rare book, um, and I'm always worried uh, that um, the gray is going to be off because I think. Um, a lot of people think that they, uh, you know, are stricter, but I, I just don't buy that. I just don't know if their grading is accurate in CGC. Now PGX, um, a dilemma came up where there's a rare book that I've been looking for for years came up as a PGX book, and I'm still debating if I'm buying it or not because I don't know what I'm getting. I'm sorry, is this the truth? Yeah, especially from it was graded in 2006 has a black cover. There could be restoration all over that sucker because I've had that happen to me before with them. And I know dozens of people have had that happen before with them. So. All right. Possible. Upgrades. Up, up. Possible grade, grade ups. What do you call those? Why am I blanking on what you call like when they bump your grade when you get a grade bump. Grade bump. Jeez. All right. Um, and the last question, uh, we did have a TJ, did they get rid of the Newton rings in the with the new slabs? No. I feel like uh, recently I, I've noticed that people have been saying that there have been less and less. They are, they are redesigning it a little bit where it's not touching as much. Yeah, the, the pressure is not as intense. My, my booster gold number one is is full of new rings. If, if it's really bad, um, they will. They oh, will they'll be good for you. Yeah. It's, it's more Newton rings than comic at this point. Yeah. I, mean, I, I myself, on the, some of the things that are slight Newton rings, I don't even see it anymore, really. And I miss it when it's not there. But I've been doing this a long time. Well, um, aside from slabs, what is your most cherished collectible? And this will be the last question for the night. We will we'll stop it at that. But what is your most cherished collectible? Uh, probably my statues. Do you have a favorite? Uh, right now, I think it's going to be um, the Hulk versus Wolverine. Oh, did you get that one? I've had that, yeah, day release. Well, fine then. I feel like... <laughs> Hulk's abs in that one are huge. Those are the it, biggest abs I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. It's on my Instagram, too. Yeah, you know I don't look at that very often. Yeah, I know. <laughs> know. Joe gets so mad at me. He's like, you haven't looked at my Instagram in like five days. Have you saw the uh, the last two uh, shows I've been on? No. No. <laughs> I did. Oh, someone downvoted this video. Someone doesn't like you, TJ. It's probably John. John's comics. Probably somebody doesn't like you. It's probably your ex-wife. <laughs> uh, you're not wrong. <laughs> if you're watching this, you're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you guys have any closing closing thoughts? Uh, may I promote something? Of course. Uh, tomorrow night. Um, on my channel at around 9.30, I Got Issues and I are doing a show called uh, Comics as Therapy. We're going to be talking about Mr. Miracle 
and um, some other heavy related topics. Uh, it is going to be, I, I was talking to him earlier because he went to a Tom King, Mitch Gerard's signing and Q and A earlier tonight. And he called me on his uh, walk back to his car to talk about it. And I said to him, I think we're either going to, uh, you know, make people feel very uncomfortable or we're going to do something really special. So, um, do I need to bring tissues? You might. Um, it, it's it's going to be a, a frank a frank discussion about um, uh, about using comic books as a way to help, as well as talking about the book itself. That's awesome. That's a great idea for a show. I'm surprised you picked. Well, I got issues for that one. <laughs> uh, you won't be after the show. I, I understand. I got issues. It's, it's, he's a great guy, and I think you guys will have a pretty cool dynamic. So that'll be a fun show to watch. Yeah, and he's going sans panda head. It's gonna he's gonna be going face. Ooh la la! He's gonna show his true self. He, he, I've already. It won't be his true first though. He's got a. Uh, he was, he unveiled himself on uh, the hunt. I think. And can you repeat your the time and channel? Uh, Nine thirty. Eastern Standard Time on my channel, White Whale Comics. He might still poop, he said. <laughs> There's no promises. How about you, TJ? You got anything coming up on your Instagram or anything else? Nothing anytime soon. Oh, well, we do have something coming up with Alec. Uh, you're not going to be there, but you're going to be a big part of it. What is that, Alec? Uh, I think it's going to be, end up being Monday now at this point. Um, it's going to be uh, a TJ Watson AOK unboxing video. Round two. Round two, which he said I should be very afraid of. So, You see that? You see those quotations? He is challenging you again. Uh, no, I am saying that is literally <laughs> a quote, quote from TJ. That is not... Sure. Saying, I should be very afraid of it. I'm saying he said, quote, I am I should be afraid. <laughs> um and then on uh Wednesday, uh D Comic Queen is gonna be on book club. We're gonna be talking about uh the series of die because there's no good books coming out this week to talk about. Um so That's we're we're catching up in in preparation for issue four the week after. <laughs> I'm so happy you guys recommended that story. Yeah, it's pretty great, right? All right, back to you, TJ. What you got? I got nothing. <laughs> I'm going to be watching uh, um, Alex's show tomorrow, and I'll be watching uh, his show Monday. Stranger Things. And we, don't have, we don't have a date or a subject yet. Stranger Things' next topic is statues. JD Comics says it. I can't show up. My statues are all over the house. <laughs> For one day, one special day, you can take them all. And put them in one room. You can be the statue dragon. I got issues. Said somebody messaged me and said I should keep the mask on because it traumatized her child. It was Jeffrey's mom. You see that statue there? What the I hell is that it's statue? The big boy. That looks like a Tarzan it's or a Conan. Yeah. Okay. With I, the... I can only see the, the ape. Can you see it? Yeah. Holy crap! That is cool. Last time I tried to move that, I dropped it. Oh, okay. Don't do that. You know how to put it back together? <laughs> Gorilla glue. Hey, oh, okay, that's a big ape. Actually, okay, serious. A giant ape. Please be careful sitting down. Dear sweet Jesus. All right, well, you have an ongoing series with JD called Stranger Things, so that's coming up. Yes. Um, for myself, I have. I think the only thing I really have planned is the Green Lantern Comic Club coming up on February 28th with the boy who had seven and myself and his son, which is going to be amazing. Um, if you haven't already picked up the Secret Origins trade paperback or comics or digital, um, pick them up. It's an amazing read. It's super quick. It, I like it flew by. I thought it was super thick. It, I you blast through it so. Uh, we will have a discussion on that, and then we will be going into Rebirth, which will happen 
um, for the mid March time frame. Um, is that is that show going to be under three hours? <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'm going to try to keep. I oh my god, I didn't realize we're almost at two hours. I will try to keep it at an hour ish because I you know the boy who had seven has got a family, and uh, I don't want to you know I have nothing going on here so. Um, but I know he's got he's got stuff to do, so we'll try to keep it short and concise so people can watch it and enjoy. But that's going to be a lot of fun. So come join the Green Lantern Comic Club. Hey, wanted to say one thing uh, to uh, take the time collectibles. Thank you. You're looking at my Instagram and hitting the like button a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great Instagram. If you guys don't follow TJ, uh, there is the link in the description for his YouTube channel. His Instagram is TJ9012. I have that memorized. Um, and it is a amazing, an amazing Instagram page. Uh, and then Alec, you can find him at his YouTube channel in the description below. Uh, and then his Instagram is just White Whale Comics, right? You got it. Yeah. Keeping it easy. Keeping it sleazy. That's right. Is that like the Mickey Mouse Club? I'm not watching your show tomorrow now. You're dead to me. Well, it's not just his show. Oh, okay. Well, I'll watch it for you, Alec. Thanks, buddy. On the rewatch. I was going to say, you're probably going to be doing other things like skiing. Yes. Yes. Tomorrow night I will. But I will try. I will try to make it. And if anything, I'll watch the rewind and leave you a nice long comment. Uh, tag, tag Wonder Woman in all the Jubilee posts. <laughs> uh, but I would like to thank... Alec, why will comment? Thank you guys for inviting me. I'm super happy to have you on as always. Uh, don't forget 19 more likes on this video, and Alec has agreed to beard to nope, beard braid his beard and put some little jewels in it. Nope, Defin definitely, definitely not. Definitely not he's it. gonna do it. Big, big no, big no. I think you should have your cat uh, comb your beard, that'd be a good video. My cat has tried to. <laughs> and uh, okay, so, and then I'd like to thank the man of the hour, our big guest, TJ the Slab Dragon Watson, uh, the arguably most amazing person in our combo community, an absolute selfless human being who um, has done nothing but amazing things for everyone. And uh, I, I I can't speak highly enough of this man. Um, thank you so much, TJ, for being on my channel and for showing some amazing comics. If you guys showed up a little late, uh, go back. We did some Q&A and then showed off some amazing comics and some stupid, awesome original artwork. So thank you, TJ, for being here. Thank you for having me. And uh, thank, thank you for this. Thank you. You are welcome. Go to sleep with it tonight. You should put it in your bed. No, you should not. To rock, uh, and, and I'll wear this shirt. Yes. <laughs> Everybody in the chat, thank you guys so much. Uh, I, I My channel would be nothing without you. So um, you guys were super participative. Particip is that even a freaking participatory? Word? Nope. Participative. Nope. Um, and you guys asked tons of questions. Uh, I, I couldn't be more thankful for an amazing support group as you all so thank you so much for making my channel amazing it is you guys who do all the work oh my god there's so many so many comments here so two hour goodbye that's right okay bye bye guys